So now we'll get into a little bit of assembly. So you're probably familiar with push and pop, hopefully, with uh, from x86, where you can actually uh, push is doing a stack operation, which is a uh, first in, last out, last in, first out. And you're going to have the element uh, the register that you're working with put on the stack. And it's actually these operations use the stack pointer, which was R13 that we saw earlier. So it's going to uh, take the address that's in the stack pointer. So here's the example. So if we have the push R7 and link register, it will actually, and the stack pointer is uh, here, if you notice, it's X7EFFFF. 958, it's going to put the, um, and the stack actually on ARM here grows uh, to lower memory addresses, just like in x86. So you're going to have the first element be put on the next four bytes. So that it's not going to modify the value at the stack pointer address. It's going to go uh, four bytes up and write the value in the next four bytes, and then followed by uh, 7E FF950, which is the last element. Um, so R7 gets put into 7E FFF954, and link register, in this case, which is uh, hex 8010, gets put into 7E FFF, or FF950. Right. So this is uh, just a push operation. The stack is actually um, something that grows towards lower memory addresses. It's just a region in memory where you can store variables and things like that. So uh, we'll get into more detail on that later. Pop actually works the same way, but in reverse. So it uh, pops off the value uh, first at the highest memory address uh, back into a register. And same thing uh, with the next element. So it just goes uh, in reverse order and pops the elements back into the registers. So uh, I'd mentioned before that ARM is using a load store architecture. So you're going to have to load from memory into the registers, and push and pop is one way of doing it. Uh, the arithmetic operations, just like in x86, you have a simple add, where it takes the source register value, adds it to either an immediate value, which is any integer, uh, with, uh, or a value in the register. Add with carry actually sets the carry flag uh, when you add. So if there's a carry that's generated when you add two uh, register values, it sets the C flag in the CPSR. Uh, subtract and subtract with carry work similarly. And uh, reverse subtract actually uh, reverses the operands for uh, doing the subtraction. And reverse subtract with carry does the same thing, but with the carry flag set. I've actually put uh, examples in the emulator uh, I'll talk a little bit about getting into the emulator a little bit later. Uh, not all of the examples that you see in the slides are going to be in there. Uh, but most of them, you can actually uh, take this C code, put it into any of the other examples that are there, compile it using the make file, and you should be able to generate the assembly. So one of the examples here I have is a main function. It takes uh, a, b, and uh, adds them to uh, adds them together. So if you actually look at the output that's generated by the assembler, um, you'll see that uh, this is a like no optimization. I've set the GCC optimization to zero, uh, so it actually generates uh, a lot of code, and you'll see that. Uh, actually, let me show. You. So if you want to start up the emulator, you can. Um, and feel free to browse around on the emulator. Um, so if you go to your home directory, uh, go to projects, and then Lenaro. And then if you just uh, say start sim, it'll start up the simulator.
So Linaro is actually an organization um, that's actually uh, has several companies involved in open source development for the ARM platform. Uh, so ARM is actually part of it. Uh, so it's uh, Texas Instruments uh, and all these uh, vendors that are uh, trying to come up with more open source development on the ARM platform. So they've actually built these uh, Linux images. They have Android images for you to run. Um, their website is linaro.org. So this is what I'm using here for the emulation. So in your root directory, actually, you'll have a directory called projects. So if you look slash root slash projects, and all the examples are located up in the examples directory. Well, most of them. actually be able to run this, you run uh, the make command. So once you've run make, you'll get an executable. And you can just say, you can execute the program by just saying backslash. Okay. So right now, example one doesn't output anything to the screen. but. Uh, Fortunately, the only editors that are available to you is uh, them, because um, Emacs is way too slow. So actually, the in the actual directory, you'll find the optimization level is not set to the one I have up here. So um, that's one difference to note. But What, you'll see, uh, what I just want to highlight here is the add instruction that we just looked at. So there's actually, you'll see there's an add with an S suffix at the bottom. And all that means is it's updating the flags in the CPSR. The special instruction that you also see is uh, CP16, or I mean sub SP followed by 16. So this is a special form of the subtract instruction. And what's that saying is take the stack pointer, subtract 16, and store that back into the stack pointer. So generally, you would have subtract stack pointer, comma, stack pointer, comma, 16 to say take the stack pointer, subtract 16, and then store it into the destination register, which is also the stack pointer. But this is sort of a shorthand notation. Um, and as you can see here, uh, the encoding for the these are actually the uh, opcodes that are generated by the compiler. So up here you'll see there's 32-bit uh, instructions mixed with 16-bit uh, instructions. So uh, this is still in thumb mode, but it's using the unified assembly language. So uh, I wanted to add an example for the subtract and reverse subtract, uh, or subtract with carry and reverse subtract operations. So here in this example, I have hex A and R0 for both. This is sort of before the operation, below, and after the operation. Um, so you start off with uh, 0A, 0B, 0C, 0D. And when you do a reverse subtract, um, you're going to get a value that's really uh, in the high range. But uh, can anybody tell me uh, which bit might be set? in the flags after this operation? Negative. Yep. And? So the carry flag is going to be set. So Which one are we looking at? Are we looking at SPC? SPC. OK. Maybe. Sorry. We'll yeah, so we're looking at the SPC instruction. Um, we have uh, 0A, 0B, 0C, 0D. And then we subtract A. We, we're essentially doing hex A minus 0A, 0B, 0C, 0D, right? Is that an overflow? What's that? I think so. No overflow? No overflow, right. 
So there's going to be no overflow. You're, you're not going to get a uh, integer that's uh, past the min, you know, limit. So uh, you're actually going to get the negative and the carry flags as uh, in here said. So and you're not going to generate an overflow. Um, and the reverse subtract. I'm sorry. So in the subtract with carry. You're actually going to subtract A from A, B, C, D. So this should be wrong. So you're going to have R0 minus R1, and then it's going to be stored in R0. And reverse subtract, it's going to be the other way, where you're going to take R1, uh, subtract R0 from it, and then store it in R0. So these instructions are confusing, which is why I wanted to highlight it up here. So. Does that make sense? Why is the carry set? What's that? For the, for the reserve, reverse subtract, why is the carry flag set after? The carry flag should not be set. And actually, in this example, um, one of the things the CPSR you're not going to see is accurate because the emulator is not accurate. So this is sort of uh, what you're going to see on the emulator. Okay. but. Yeah, because when you access the CPSR, the flags aren't uh, exactly correct. So I just wanted to point that out. Thank you, uh, Gail. So, so this is uh, what you're going to see on the emulator. But if you access the CPSR um, on a real hardware platform, you would see that the negative and the carry flags would be set. So for subtract, let's see. So the next thing we'll go into is the um, multiply operations. So multiply, it takes two registers, multiplies them, and stores it into the destination register. Then there's something called multiply with add, where it takes uh, three registers, actually, uh, as, uh, along with the destination, uh, where it multiplies the first two and adds the third one and stores it into the destination register. So the register 3, which is referred to in the manual as RA, is actually called an addend. And uh, it's the addition operand. Yes. And uh, multiply with subtract is uh, MLS. And it takes the first two registers, multiplies them, and then subtracts it from the third one. Can you give any insight into why they provide these double operation operation? I, I think it was meant for optimization for their hardware. Mm -hmm. So uh, the instruction sets are generally based on their hardware design. So um, each, each architecture version, you'll see things. And they try to maintain backward compatibility. Uh, so I'm guessing this was uh, a lot more for backward compatibility. Probably it was useful at some point in the past. Yes. <laughs> There's a lot of weird like, arithmetic instructions that seem to combine operation. It just didn't feel very risky. It felt like the opposite of that. Right. That's true. <laughs> so the other note that's interesting about these operations <laughs> is the result is not dependent on whether the uh, source is uh, signed or not. So. It'll just uh, multiply and do the subtraction appropriately, and uh, you'll get a signed or an unsigned value as a result. So, so here's an example. Uh, so I actually had to try to generate these uh, instructions from the assembler. Um, I actually put some effort. So um, if you just have the uh, generally ARM. Um, or GCC will actually optimize it uh, such that if you're just using constant like these, um, it'll just output the value that's the result. So it'll actually do the calculation for you. <laughs> and so, um, but this is what it would look like, right? Uh, if you had a multiply instruction um, and you used, uh, so here it's going to multiply R0 and R1 and store the result in R0. And here it's going to uh, take R1 and R0, multiply them, add R2, and store that result in R0. And uh, 
So here was an actual example. Um, so if you have R0 has, again, the famous text value A, and R1 has the text value E, you're going to get 8F. Um, in R0 after the multiply and add. So it's actually at multiplying A and E, adding the value 3 to it, and you get 8F. And multiply with subtract is the same thing. Now, the confusing thing here is, I told you guys that the S suffix causes the flags to be updated. But here, the S actually means subtract and does not mean, you know, update the flag. So just be aware of that. Um, I have a question. I might have missed the information on the previous example. Yeah, it's W. Yes, thank you uh, for highlighting that. So this is actually an artifact of GNU. Uh, the assembler. It uses it to tell the uh, uh, linker and everything to say, uh, to tell it to basically use it as a Y. W stands for Y. The opposite of W is N, which is uh, narrow. And it tells it to force the uh, emulator to use 32-bit um, uh, width sizes as opposed to 16-bit width sizes. So uh, it's just an artifact. When you write the assembly program, you don't write that in. And it's something that GNU uh, does for uh, the ARM emulator. So, yeah, it's not really, uh, doesn't mean anything. Now, the interesting thing is, now we've done add, subtract, multiply. Uh, so there's obviously division, uh, but there isn't. So uh, on the Cortex-A profile, there is no integer division operation. Uh, it's all implemented using software. And the book I told you guys about actually has the algorithm that does the software-based division um, using all the other operations. So um, the only uh, place where this is applicable is on the Cortex-R profile processors, which is meant for real-time embedded systems. They actually have a uh, division operation the SDIV and uh, the signed divide and the unsigned divide. Um, so on the Cortex-A profile, there is no division. So here again, I generated this by writing assembly. But this is what it might look like on the Cortex-R profile. Right? So you're going to have a uh, signed divide. It's going to take R0 divide by R1, store it into R0. Um, for both cases. Now we actually, uh, I have the instructions for running the emulator, uh, but you can go in and actually see what the divide looks like on ARM uh, using software emulation. So another note is, uh, I, I know I said you can use SCP to copy files back and forth from, your, from the emulator for the work you've done, um, but there's another way you can use Ubuntu's uh, shared network folders. Uh, to actually connect and copy stuff graphically if you want to. So I'll just show that to you guys now. Started the emulator. Right, so Control L will actually clear the screen um, if you don't like things getting lost at the bottom. Um, but you can go to Places uh, and hit Network. Connect to servers. So you you go to Places, uh, connect to server, and you pick uh, SSH. And local host for 2200. You can just share the root folder. Username is arm.
and the password is password with a zero, uh, just like for the VM, it's the same. The port should be 2200. So the username is actually root, not harm. So the port is 2200, and folder is should have access to your uh, and projects. And so all the labs that are in here and your examples are going to be in here. So you could actually edit using gedit or whatever you want if you like. It's compared to Vim on the emulator. So let me just introduce object dump real quick. Um, so object dump is a utility that you can use to uh, output the executable linkable format files. Um, so whatever the executable that you generate is uh, using the ELF format in the emulator. So you can actually dump the, it gives you the ARM assembly as well as the opcodes um, that are in the executable. So they're generally in a form that's uh, before the link stage, essentially. So the linker actually takes uh, static objects, dynamic objects, put them, puts them together. But uh, the ELF actually gives it to you before they're linked. So uh, the addresses that you see might be different when actually run in memory. So um, the dash G GDB option actually uh, So the dash G GDB option uh, tells uh, is used with GCC for embedding debug symbols into your executable. So object dump actually uses these symbols that are in the executable to show you uh, in a nice format. Uh, all the so things like function names, variable names all show up. Um, and so when you use object dump, uh, you use the dash D op option. And uh, finally, you provide it the executable file, and it outputs all the uh, assembly and opcodes for you. So here's an example. So this was Hello World. Um, you can see it's using uh, libc libraries to do the actual printf when you uh, go into the example. but um, it's using offset tables and things like that, but it stores the string uh, in a section of read-only data memory, and uh, you can actually see the address and the actual values. Um, so you just say object dump dash d 
Hello World, which is the executable, um, and I used uh, PipeLess to actually show me just a few snippets at a time. So now we can try dividing on the emulator. So if you go to Projects um, and Examples, and copy example one into uh, a folder called div example, or you can just modify example one itself. This is just the add uh, function. So that way you don't have to change the make file. And instead of doing an add, replace instead of a plus b, return a divide by b. And then use object dump to see what uh, code is generated for the divide. I'm going to try it out here. So if you want to remove the executable and objects, uh, there's a, uh, you can give an option to make called clobber. And uh, make clobber will remove the object files, the .o uh, files that are generated by GCC, as well as the executable. Uh, make clean will only remove the object files uh, and leave the executable alone. So uh, these are just some of the options in your make file. So, um, so now if I say make and then I run object dump dash d example one. So if you see here, so right here, this is our add function. And you can see that it's making a call to AEBI divide, uh, IDIV, integer division. And if you look at that function, it's actually branching to uh, integer division. And if you look at that function, it's actually branching to uh, div si3 skip div0. And then if you look at that guy, it's uh, generating this long piece of code. You see a lot of, uh, you see a sort of pattern here. Uh, what it's doing is, uh, Dave pointed this out, uh, Dave uh, Kepler, was that it's doing loop unrolling. So you'll see a lot of the same instructions were being repeated. But uh, actually here, you can see it's doing a lot of left shifts, uh, subtracts, and then compare. So this is what the divide function looks like on your uh, Cortex-A profile. So, and believe it or not, I found out that they actually use this as a benchmark for the iPhone, for example. So see how long it takes for it to do a division operation. So a lot of the algorithm details are actually found in the book um, that I referenced earlier. So if you're interested, go check it out. So next I'll briefly go into the NOP uh, instruction. So just like on x86, um, a NOP is an instruction that does nothing. Um, but considering that it does nothing, it actually um, is used for um, code padding. So it doesn't add or remove from the uh, execution time um, because it's optimized. And uh, the ARM pipeline actually takes NOPs into consideration for uh, either for skipping over or whatever. So, um, so it, you'll see that even though it does uh, nothing, it's, it's used quite often for uh, alignment purposes and things like that. So. Um, it's also used for interrupt vector tables, which I'll go into more uh, when we cover interrupts. And uh, in some microcontrollers, it's also used for synchronizing the pipeline. So the next feature I'll talk about is the barrel shifter. So it's a hardware implemented um, multiplier slash divider that actually multiplies and divides by power of two. It essentially shifts your bits either left or right. And there's actually uh, several instructions that allow you to do this in line with another instruction. So say you wanted to add two numbers, but you wanted to add one of the operands multiplied by two, or power of two. right? So you would use 
something like an arithmetic shift right, where um, you take the most significant bit, it shifts the bits by um, to the right by the specified number of uh, bits. You actually specify an immediate value uh, with the ASR instruction, and it shifts those bits by that much. And therefore, you're either multiplying by a power of two in this case. Um, you can also shift left, right, and uh, actually, sorry. So the arithmetic shift right is actually dividing by two. Um, the logical shift left is multiplying by two. You're shifting bits to the right. So, uh, I mean, shifting bits to the left. So logical shift right. Uh, the differences here are the way the carry bit is used. So the arithmetic shift uh, right will actually take the rightmost bit that pops off the end and puts it uh, puts it into the carry bit. The logical shift uh, left uh, left bit goes into the carry. The only interesting one here is the RRX instruction, which actually uses the carry bit uh, to uh, extend into the register value. So. Uh, compared to the other ones, you won't have uh, the carry bit being used uh, to go into the register. You know, so arithmetic shift right will take uh, the value off the, the least significant bit, uh, put it into the carry bit. But for RRX, it takes the carry bit and actually puts it into the register on the left. Uh, we'll see examples of this. So. So for example, right, the move uh, R7, R5 with logical shift left 2. So what this is doing is it's taking um, the value in R5, multiplying by uh, 2 to the power of 2, which is 4, and then putting that value into R7. Similarly, add R0, R1, R1, left shift, uh, logical shift left by 1 is multiplying the value in R1 by 2, and then uh, adding it to R1, and then storing the result in R0. So the only interesting thing, uh, again, to repeat, is RRX takes the carry bit in. And since it's shifting right, it's going to move the carry bit into the most significant bit position compared to uh, the other ones, which actually just uh, take the bits that are popped off and put that into the carry bit. So it allows you to do uh, these sort of operations and uh, in line with the instruction. So it's actually used as an optimization, uh, where if you have to take an operand <coughs> or some instruction and manipulate it in some way before you use it, uh, this is the way to do it. So uh, this is where I actually talk about the dot .w uh, that was asked by Steve, I believe. Um, and so it's, again, just a GNU assembler artifact. Um, even though the manual also uses it, it's basically the assembler is telling um, the uh, ARM chip that's executing which encoding to use. The narrow is for 16-bit encoding. Y, uh, W is for 32-bit encoding. Um, again, to recap, S means update the flags in the CPSR, unless it's MLS or specific instructions that don't use S that way. Um, and so we, I just want to emphasize, we don't use the dash dot N or the dot W in our assembly code. Um, it's generated by a new assembly. So. so an example for the barrel shifter. Uh, so if you're doing a multiply by two function, where all you're doing is uh, multiplying by two, so um, it will actually take uh, that function and uh, generate a logical shift left uh, and update the flags. Um, so here you can see R0 is being multiplied by two and then uh, stored in R0. So if you do multiply and add by two, which is also in a multiply and add by two, uh, which is using the add instruction that I covered earlier, it will take uh, R1, multiply by two, add to R0, and then store it into R0. This one is actually a divide by two example. Um, this one is interesting in that uh, when I wrote the code to divide by two, uh, it generated an add and an arithmetic shift uh, right. 
operation. So it's actually doing a divide by two, but if you see, it's taking uh, uh, R zero and uh, taking the. It's essentially trying to get the sine bit. So it's trying to get the sine bit uh, so it can set the flag for negative. So it's shifting the entire value by 31 bits, uh, setting the flag uh, because uh, the arithmetic shift right is actually using two's complement notation. So, so the S flag on the ASRS is actually updating the flag. So. Um, that's how divide by two works. So this actually example is in your uh, examples directory if you want to try it out. In the example 3.2c, yep. uh, why do you have to, in the divide by two, mm -hmm. uh, what does the add to you other than getting that bit? Yeah, <laughs> so. What's the purpose of that? So the add is actually, if you look, it's actually taking uh, R0, shifting right by 31 bits. So it gets you that last uh, last bit, essentially. OK. OK. And then um, OK, so this is the two's complement notation for negative 8. So um, with this, uh, sorry, it's right here. So. So what it's going to do is it's going to take um, FFFF, FF8 down here. It's going to shift that to the right. So you're going to get uh, all zeros, right, except for one in the least significant bit position. Then it's going to add it um, to the value in there already. So you're going to get FFFF, F9, right? So um, this one's actually going to uh, give you negative 7, I believe. And so now what happens is, so you've gone from negative 8 to negative 7, right? And then uh, you shift right by 1. What happens is you're uh, taking negative 7 and essentially dividing it by 2, but you're still uh, keeping the negative uh, bit intact. So you're going to get negative 4 here. So when you divide uh, negative 8 by 2, you're actually taking that negative into account. Does that make sense? It's a 2's complement uh, divide. So okay. So this is for uh, rotate right with extend uh, and the logical shift left. So down below, I'm following the same convention here, which is uh, Below is before the operation, and above is after the operation. And the red values indicate the values that have changed. So uh, when you do a rotate right with extend, um, and you can see here there's no immediate value being specified. So the default here is 1. So it takes the value, rotates right by 1 bit, and uh, you're, since you're doing a move negative, it's actually taking the um, complement of the value in R0 and then shifting it by 1 and storing it into R0. So this is a more sort of exa complex example of how Rx works. And logical shift left, you've already seen. It's multiplying by 2 to the power of 4 um, and then adding it to the value in R0 uh, and storing it in R0. So, 